everyone's been buzzing about open source models. But what are they and how are they different from regular models? That's what we heard a breakdown in today's episode of AI Explainer series. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another episode. My name is Meena Ganesh. I'm here with our CTO, Ben Kuss. And today, we're going to talk about open source models and so much more. So Ben, let's start with the basics. What are open source models? So you could think about models in two kind of categories. Uh, one would be the proprietary models or the closed models where you don't actually know how they work. Most of the time you interact with these, you're actually sending API calls to these vendors and then they're sending you back responses, but you don't really know how it works. It's kind of a black box. This would include things like Anthropics Claude, Gemini series of models from, from, from GCP, OpenAI has their like GPT-5. All of these are examples of sort of these like closed proprietary models. But they also have this other class of models, which you would call open. And so this would be things like Meta's Llama models. Uh, Mistral has open source models. They have open models now from, from OpenAI, including the new uh, GPT OSS models, and also even things like from uh, Gemma, from GPT, and others. Mm -hmm. So Ben, you mentioned open models. What does that really mean? So by open, it, it means that you can actually go online and uh, find these different models I mentioned and download and run them yourself. Oh, so like open source code? Yeah. Pretty much the same thing. It has a lot of similarities with the open source movement because okay. um, uh, for a very long time, there's been open source versions of this really high quality, really good software that people care about. And so, and so um, open models come from that same sort of mindset where you say, oh, I can go get these these models and I can uh, run them. Um, although uh, some of this, the benefits of open source don't quite really apply in some cases. So some people, instead of calling these models open source, they call them open weight. Ah, okay, so there's there's two kinds of open now. Okay, yeah. we're yeah. following. Okay, so now the, and the reason you make the distinction is because um, some of the, the these models, they most of the value of these models turn into these these what they call these weights or these parameters, and they come in these like very large files. If you opened up and looked at them, you would see a bunch of these floating point numbers. These are the parameters. If you think about like uh, source code, like actually lines of code that somebody wrote to run these things, um. Uh, how many lines of code do you think are sort of in these base models? And, and, I'll, and I'll give you a couple examples to, 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 to help. Um, so, Yet another Ben pop quiz. Yes. Okay. So was the thing only orders of magnitude, like rough orders of magnitude, okay. like, like you know, thousands or millions or that kind of thing. So um, for something like uh, like an open source database, like MySQL, that would be like in the millions of lines of code, a little bit more, a little bit less. Yeah. Um, something like Linux operating system, which is open source, would be like, tens of millions of lines of code, if you include all the drivers and things. Um, and then something like uh, uh, probably like big applications that you know, like like Microsoft Word, those kind of things, probably again, tens of millions, large things like Facebook or Google would be tens of millions or hundreds of millions more. So this is the kind of class of these like applications you might be familiar with. There's just a lot of code that goes into it. Okay, so guess how many lines of code would be in sort of one of these base models that you might download um, online? Okay, well, I'm going to show you my thinking like an agent. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to break down what you just told me. Okay, so if these big applications already have 10 million lines, tens of millions of lines of code, but now we're to talking about a model that then has to look up information, give you answers, iterate, there's so much going on. I'm going to guess hundreds of millions of code, billions? I mean, I don't, like, how hard are we talking? So in, yeah, it's, it's really kind of like eye-opening moment when you kind of look at it, which is to say that that um, you think it would be so big because it's such a this is like some of the most revolutionary technology ever made. But it's I actually mean, it, it has to be right. Yeah. We're considering them for enterprise use cases, yep. like in order to yep. satisfy those complex things, it probably yeah. has to be. So, but when you look at the base models again, this is just a straightforward models. They're kind of the the the, the base of it. It only really has like thousands of lines of code. So like. I feel like we need a recount on that. Are we sure? <laughs> We're missing well, so remember, a couple it, it, zeros. It, it has like uh, like thousands or tens of thousands, depending wow. on the specifics. But then it comes with these giant files that are the the weights. Um, and so you I might see. Get... Okay, so it's it's more. It's not just code. Yes. that supports them. It's a it's a package. Thing. And, and okay. the most interesting thing is actually in the weights. Um, so the lines of code are straightforward. You know, they they set up the tokens and they they go through and they process these kind of like the the way that these transformers and these neural uh, networks are all set up. But then also then it processes these giant weights of of these files. So it might be a few tens of kilobytes or or hundred kilobytes or something of code, and then 
gigabytes, like tens or like in the case of something like um, uh, the uh, GPT's new OSS, it's like 240 g like gigabytes of the weights wow. that you have to then get and then run locally. So the weights are the key to these open weight models. And that's the, that's why people sometimes say that they'll sometimes call them open weight models or uh, open source would typically be the same thing in this case. I see. Um, but interestingly, like where well, one of the benefits of, of software is open source is you can go see, you can see exactly how it runs. You can look for security things in there and, and you just like, it's very clear to you, somebody who understands code um if you look at the weights it's very hard like nobody can actually figure out what the weights like if you change the weight, if, you, if, if it, it doesn't really make sense to you and so it, the fact that it's open is great but the weights are not really readable by any any anything anyone so is there any benefit for enterprises then i mean if, if they, they can or, or their teams can actually go in and read these things and interpret them because so that they can go one step further and then fine tune them for their use case well, i mean is, is there really any benefit to those i think that a, a really big reason why people are always excited about this is because um one is that you can just go download and run some of these models and there's a whole variety of them they come in different sizes from different vendors and so you have full control you can just go get the model and run it you could run it on your laptop in some cases if you have a powerful enough laptop or and some people put them on specialized devices um also, it's um, uh, you have the ability to fine tune these. If you know how to do it, you can actually take the base models and then you could continue down some training runs and these different techniques to actually update some of these weights. And so rather than do it yourself from scratch, which would be incredibly expensive, you can build on top of these 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 models and, and update some of their weights with a mechanism you call fine tuning. Mm -hmm. and, and so like that is something that you can do with these, um, these systems um, in addition to the idea that it's free. There's no license cost to actually utilize in the software. So to, to recap, the three benefits are you can download them and run them on any device. You can fine tune them further to your, for your use case. And the cost is free. So if I were to do a rebuttal for each of these, I could use current models on, on any device today. I mean, what, like, isn't that the same thing? Yes. In practice, you can you can use a device to access these models. But what really what you're doing in that case is you're using you're accessing the model over the internet. And there's some server farm somewhere that runs these these models and usually these big GPU configurations. And right. what your device is doing is simply just asking it and getting a response, which actually works great. That's a very common thing. Many of the applications you use have that exact model. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it is uh, if if you didn't have network connectivity or if you wanted to make sure that you had a very isolated model, then you would have to you couldn't use Use one of these these closed models for that. You'd have to use an open model that you then run yourself. You being a developer, an enterprise who wanted to to really like uh, isolate that model. Mm, I see. Okay. And then the second thing that you mentioned, uh, fine tuning them. Arguably, we could do that with the existing models today, like the closed models today. Yeah. So, so what would be the yeah. So the um, many many vendors, including many of the the closed vendors, they offer this ability to fine tune, which um, in and so you could give it some examples, and then and then they would actually update a new model. Now, um, that again, that works great. And it, uh, although it, when you're done with it, you actually are still running it. They still close model to you, so you're essentially giving some information that then they create a model and they run for you. So you still it's still a black box. You don't really know how it works, and so that works fine in many cases. But if you wanted more control, then you can fine tune and run it yourself. And then you have the mm -hmm. ability, you own that that sort of model that, that comes out of it at the end. Mm, okay. And then you mentioned an interesting point that this was free. How How is it free? Well, uh, it's it's open. The same way open source software is. They just give it to you. They say, true. here you go. Yes. It's free. Yeah. And then you're not, it, it doesn't matter. You could just use it. And I guess because it is on your device, like what you mentioned before, it's not actually going back somewhere and then being processed and yeah. brought back. Yeah. It's it's free. You can use these greatest technologies that disrupt the technology era for free. Um, now, for free in terms of, of, of uh, license costs. So then an enterprise today can just go download one of these models and start using them for their use cases, right? I mean, what would be the, the consideration then to go with the closed model? Well, um, it, it's free for licensing. But you still have to run it. So I'll give you an analogy. Uh, uh, let's say that um, uh, I offer you and I say, like, uh, I want you to figure out um, what, what would you rather have? Um, would you rather you're going to travel somewhere? Would you rather take an Uber um, or would you rather have this car? In fact, I'll give you the car for free. Okay. Oh. Car for free? Yeah. Um that sounds I'll, like yeah, a I'll, I'll give you an open source iteration of this car for free. Yes. Okay. You, you can't actually sell it when you're done. But yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh 
no, car for free sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll you, take you, door number two. Yes. So like you might say, obviously, it's going to be cheaper to um, to have a free car and drive around than it will be to for you to um, have an Uber, which is expensive. Uh, per, right. Yeah. 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 Now, okay. So that that in many cases that's true, but oftentimes it's not if you actually do the full total cost of ownership. Mm. So for instance, imagine if you're doing a ride share, you you don't pay insurance, you don't have to pay for gas, you don't have to pay for um for like it like parking if the car's not in use and just all of these costs. So it, in many cases, if you're not utilizing it all the time, like it, it may be that like your car that was quote unquote free is actually costing you a lot. And it's very similar to the world of of these these running infrastructure at this kind of scale is that just to procure and to get these systems, sometimes you rent the, the GPU servers, it's just expensive. And it's typically, you 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 have it running all the time. Mm-hmm. And so like, let's say you only need it for parts of your day when people are working, or you only need it for like in the weekends, like, you know, nobody's, nobody uses it. You still have to pay for it. You have to pay for the the cost of, of the servers. You have to pay for the space. You have to pay yeah. for electricity. You have to pay for all of it. And that by itself can easily add up to being, in some cases, more expensive than your cost to just use it when you need to use it, like on demand. And so in this in this model, like usually you have to run a full total cost of ownership. And because the many of the current uh, uh, models are actually fairly reasonably priced and they, they have this effort, uh, most of these, these uh, model providers have done a great job of like constantly lowering the cost because they're more efficient. They can run their, their models like at, at scale across many of these servers, these specialized systems that they have fairly cheaply. And in some cases they can actually, in many cases, they can actually run it cheaper um, then you can free run it yourself. Wow. So that's the fact that it's free is a little bit misleading in that way. But one thing I, I want to, uh, I really like the car analogy. Taking that one step further now, if an enterprise does download a model, the other thing they have to also keep up with is the fact that there's new models all the yeah. time. Yeah, in the car so analogy. Then, yeah. what, like, what do they do? Download another model? Yeah, so in the car analogy, you, yeah. you'd end up with like, what happens when your car breaks? Or what happens when you need to get a new car or something? Then right. like, And so in this infra models, you would be, you got to keep it up and running. If, it, if, if it, there's it, a better it model, down, it has yeah. like the feature That's that right. you really want. You, you then have to probably like switch them out. Maybe you have to run both for a little while to get yeah. used to them. And then you have to pay for double the capacity. And like, and so these are the kind of challenges you that come. You have to fine tune it again. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So these are the kind of challenges that come with running your own infrastructure. And these are challenges you just don't have when you're utilizing one of these models from one of these vendors, like yeah. the, 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 the ones available online. You know, one key component that we haven't touched upon yet that we uh, often come across in these topics of AI, enterprise and content is around security and permissioning. So when we come to now open source, open weight models, what does that mean for the security and permissioning considerations? Yeah. So a lot of people um, will highlight that a open source model, because you can run it yourself, you are in complete control. Like no doubt about it, everything that happens is completely under your control. You run on the servers that you want with the same kind of, uh, with all the security characteristics and, and you're just completely in control compared to some of these like kind of black box-esque uh, models that that you, you don't quite know all the details on how they work. Mm-hmm. I think that just the, the fact that you can control them is an important security consideration. Um, although many people will agree that like the even the the, the models that are hosted, especially um, uh, by like trustworthy vendors, and are utilized by trustworthy uh, uh, platforms like at Box, we we have we publish our enterprise uh, our AI principles. We 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 tell our customers in great detail um, about all of the things that we do to keep the model safe and secure. Um, and so if, uh, one of the keys, like we talked about in one of our previous episodes, is that you can run AI safely and securely even if it's hosted somewhere else. And this is a common thing that many customers already just know because they they do utilize this kind of thing with AWS, with GCP, with Azure, and so on, where they can run these uh, they can run infrastructure in the cloud um, that is that is uh, uh, hosted by a trusted provider. Um, so, uh, uh, so you can run these these uh, these these proprietary models in in a very safe way. Or if you want, you can do, you can run it yourself. Also, again, you can secure that yourself. You have to figure out the best way to secure it. But and so in both cases, I think that there's an argument that you can run these very very securely. But I'd say in, for most enterprises, uh, uh, they have the option of picking the different. The, they they can pick either option, and 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 they can expect that there's a way to do it very securely. So, how can an enterprise gauge? you know, when to use an open source, open weight model versus a closed model. It sounds like there's many benefits to both of these kinds. Yeah. So I think um, typically the open source models or the open weight models, they're um, they're very valuable if you are a very advanced user who really wants to take one of those into account one, uh, to those benefits. Like you really want to run on a specialized device, you need to run in some air gap or something. Um, but for most enterprise uses, you probably don't need to have your own 
uh, open model because there's so many great models from trusted providers available to you. Um, in addition to using it from like enterprise platforms like Box, who will we, we'll take care of managing how we access securely those models. Mm. So you don't really need to go through the trouble of setting up your own. So Ben, if enterprises don't really need to use these, is there really any benefit to them having them? I think there's a giant benefit to the whole industry um, and to people who use these models like Box is um, is that if a company releases an open source version of their their software, it, it's it typically means that you have an alternative to buying from them, which is to use their open source model, and that usually means that you are able to um, that the company who has their their uh, the model that they're releasing, like like OpenAI or yeah. like, like Gemini from Google, like that they will often need to compete with themselves in many ways, which means they have to provide a great service. They have to make sure that it's very performant and make sure that they have great, uh, that they, they keep the cost roughly uh, competitive with what we could run things ourselves. Um, and so in, in by doing this, you almost are ensuring that in the future, you're keeping an open and competitive market because not only are there great models available across all of these new models that are coming all the time, but then also there's open source variants of them. And so it basically leads to an open model. You worry much less about lock-in. You 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 have multiple ways to get these benefits. And and so then um, for, for companies like Box, you have to make technology decisions. Or for our customers who then can then select these kind of models inside of Box using our AI studio or those other techniques, you just it, it almost ensures that you have a future of open choices in in a lot of variety. And I think that's one of the main benefits that everybody's excited about. Even if you don't use the open models, you're excited that they exist because it, it shows a path of openness for the whole industry. Ah, I see. Cool. So if we were to recap, we talked about a lot of topics here when it comes to open source, open weight models. Uh, we went through the difference between an open model versus a closed and then we broke down some of the really great benefits, but also drawbacks, uh, the catch to having open source, open weight models, uh, how enterprises can gauge and you know why it's actually good for the industry overall. So for a lot of our viewers tuning in, Ben, what's the TLDR here? So I'd say for most enterprises, the, the TLDR is that um, it's great to know that these, these models, open models exist and that you could potentially use them. But for the most part, you don't actually need to because the the current way that most people use models via the other platforms or directly access them via API is is still a great option for most people. Great insights, Ben. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.